The high cost of living is forcing more parents to move back in with their adult children. And researchers are calling it the reverse boomer effect. 25% of millennials are now living with their older relatives. Maria Bartiromo is here with us now. Uh, that's 25% yeah. is a lot. My mother moved in with me, but yes. that's a whole other story. Uh -huh. I took her in. So it wasn't, she, it wasn't about in inflation. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. I mean, I think that things are so stressed right now that people are, you know, moving in together. You have Google telling employees, we want you to share desks. Right. I mean, it's pretty because That's because they're downsizing their office space? They're downsizing the office space, and you're seeing that across the commercial real estate market. People are not going back to work all at the same time. So people are subleasing and mm -hmm. having a different approach to work and that I think could be a linchpin in terms of accelerating this downside this slowing in the economy if we have a problem in real estate uh, you're gonna have a major problem in in the recession and macro story in my view hmm. Kamala Harris thinks they've done good things um, she's selling the idea that she this administration has lowered costs for the American family Marilyn why? we have reduced heating and electricity bills so folks have more money in their pocket to buy things like school supplies, replace the dishwasher, or take a family vacation. We do this work because we know that when we lower costs for working people, when working people can buy a home, when working people can thrive, our nation thrives. Okay, so we can debate all that. Gas prices, however, they, they, they were over five bucks a gallon. Um, right now, today, they're at 339, so that's still up 40% from two years ago. And the good money is betting that they're going to go higher come springtime. Well, Bill, I mean, gas and oil prices are higher than where they were when Joe Biden started selling oil from the Strategic Reserve. Unfortunately, the vice president and the president seem way out of touch with the American people. I mean, what am I going to do? Go get on an electric school bus? What am I going to do? Take my gas stove and buy a new one with all the money that I'm saving? I'm sorry, but this is just not the reality that American families are facing right now. The, a, a dozen and eggs is up 70% year over year. Margarine is up 45% year over year. Fuel oil up 27%. The list goes on. Inflation has cut into profits. It has cut into wages. It has cut into our ability to spend and actually eat at home. Groceries are so expensive. We were just talking during the commercial break that you don't even want to eat at home anymore. You'd rather go out because it's cheaper. So, Maria, when you look at this going into an election year. We know that the White House is going to continue to say, look at all the wonderful things we've done. Infl and they'll t tell you that inflation is coming down. They're going to you're going to hear all these things like Kamala Harris, we've saved you so much on heating bills. What is a way that Republicans fight back against the bully pulpit in that regard? Because if, we were just talking also about that jobs number in January was 517,000 jobs. And even if it's revised downward just a little bit, I, it seems to me that the, the Democrats seem to have kind of their win at their back at the moment, at least in terms of the reporting. Right, because there's a lag effect to higher interest rates. I mean, we yep. see the Federal Reserve going from zero, which we were at zero for like 15 years, zero to 450, you know, to going to 5% in a hurry. This all happened in an 11-month span that rates are going higher, the string of interest rate hikes. That's going to continue. The Fed told us yesterday we're not done yet. As rates continue to rise, you will see a lag effect impact on things like employment, mm -hmm. on things like growth. Just mm -hmm. uh, an hour ago, we got the GDP number, mm -hmm. uh, the second read for the fourth quarter, and it was a good number. It was 2.7 percent growth. Yes, it's growth. Mm -hmm. It was lower than uh, the expectations, which was 2.9 percent, but you're going to see growth continue to slow down. Uh -huh. So the question is, second half of the year, will be, we be in recession going yeah. into the 2024 election? You think Likely. So? Likely. Likely, because okay. we're seeing a real slowdown. That makes well, a difference. Thanks, Maria. Yeah. A lot to get to, a lot to cover. Thanks for doing We that. love Thank your you. pin today. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.